Hi, everybody. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us, for being a part of our family. We truly appreciate all of you. We are going to extend our little leaf in our little table that doesn't have a spot for a leaf, and you guys are free to sit down amongst us, crowd right in, get your elbows right in here, and we are a giant family, and we thank you guys very, very much for all that you guys do and the support that you guys do. Guys, please, um, in the description, look at the other channels we have. We just got yet another attempt uh, by Howley Scriptures to take down our channel and we are trying to get um yahoo and the torah with more subs so at some point when they do nail this one we can hopefully go live over there and if we can't go live there guys check out rumble odyssey uh bit shoot and um we're, we're all over the place and so even when we get struck out here we will start another yahoo and the torah channel and we will never ever stop we will never ever bow to the to we will never bow to evil we will never bow we bow to yah yah only all right who are we and who is this family what do we believe gentlemen we believe that the torah is good for all generations that it should be kept that it should not be done away with as people say it should not be something that is just scoffed at and looked at and said uh we can do what we want how is salvation achieved Jaden? Uh, by believing in messiah and having forgiveness of sins and what, how, how else is that? Is that a, is it a set and forget? That's all we have? No, we need to follow the Torah and we need to believe that the Messiah came down and died for our sins, that he is a sacrifice. Eli, lots and lots of, there's like 65,000 religions that have told us the laws are no more. Why wouldn't we believe all of those religions that have come out? They're obviously uh, holy men that know what the Bible says, right? No, because not once in the Bible does it say that the laws are gone away with. Yeah, they're, they're good for all generations, they're good for all times, they will bless you, they will keep you, and we should embrace ourselves in them every single day. Okay, today is on our Creator's Calendar, it is month 8, it is a third day on our Creator's Calendar, that makes it a uh, Tuesday, is yep. that a Tuesday for everyone? Okay, um, the 15th day on the uh, Gregorian calendar, the 20th day on our Creator's Calendar, and we are cruising through this week very quickly, and... Um, how are you guys? Good. good. Everyone good? Yep. Yep. We are going to go into our handy dandy split screen. And three, two, one. All right, band members, it's almost there. Um, that's it. Eli, thank you. Thank you, Jade. I got less fingers out of that. Yes, and so we are a broke band. We are the band that uh, our guitars are broken, our drums are broken, but we're still beating the drum to the best that we can. And um, that's the best we can do. So thank you guys very, very much. We are in Mark 13. Gentlemen, I want to remind us that we are seeking out the laws, statutes, and commands of Messiah Yahushua. And for those who do not know, Messiah Yahushua's commands are a basically the same as his father's. They're, they don't really change at all. But he gives us finer lines that we should walk, finer lines that we should do. And it is important that we do this. Okay, 13. And as he went out of the Mikdash, one of his Talmudians said to him, Teacher, see what stones and what buildings... And Yahushua answering said to him, uh, there it is, sorry, I, on this other one here. Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another at all, which shall not be thrown down. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the Mikdash, Kepha and Yaakov and Yochanan and Andre asked him separately, say to us, when shall these be? And what shall be the sign when all this is going to be accomplished? Okay, we've gone over this before, right? This one didn't have the, the same three questions the other one did. This one only has two. And so the questions are, and, and he's answering, when will the temple be destroyed, right? That's what he said. He said, there'll be a day when one of these stones will not be upon another. It'll be just destroyed. So they're saying, that when shall this be? And when shall be the sign when all this is going to be accomplished? And Yahushua began to say to them, take heed that no one leads you astray. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am he, and they shall lead many astray. And when you hear of fightings and reports of fightings, do not be troubled. It has to take place, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and reign against reign. And there shall be earthquakes in various places, and there shall be scarcities of food and disturbances. These are the beginnings of birth pains. Okay, we have earthquakes all the time. Food is becoming more scarce than what we have. 
Um, there's a lot of disturbances. We've heard of a tremendous amount of disturbances. We know of rumors and rumors of wars. They're all over the place. Everybody says they're going to war, whether or not it's a hoax or whether or not it's a you know, state-sponsored terrorism. It's at the end, the people of our creator and the Yaz people are the ones that always get annihilated, you know. And so we must um, make sure that we are, um, that we are, you know, understanding that these are the signs of, of an end times. And um, we know that the food is going to shorten up. We know from the book of Revelation that a uh, cup of flour is going to be worth a day's wage. And um, so we all need to be aware of this. And, you know, if we have eyes to see and ears to hear and you guys have the abilities to buy lentils, I would continue to buy mass amount of lentils up until there is no more food to purchase anymore. Right. And that, that is what we need to do because we, we see the weather. We know how to interpret the weather based upon the, the colors of the sky. But we see something right in front of us. And they said they, they've been telling us for a very long time now, uh, we're going to eat the bogs and we are going to be the happy. And, um, so if you do not want to eat the bugs, a good chance right now is to still buy lentils. You can still buy lentils. They, one bit, little bit of bag of lentils feeds our family for a day. Um, and they're, they're small little bags. I don't know what they actually cost us. Probably like 50 cents back in the day. I don't know. Um, but they would have literally saved our lives. And so if we know that we are to be having a famine, then we need to be wise in what we're doing. And I'm not saying to sit here and be fearful, but I'm saying to be, if Yah has blessed you with the ability that you are able to get some food and extra food right now, be like Yosef. You know, when he went down there, they, they saved up for seven years and they were able to, you know, survive a, a what's coming. And it, what's coming is man-made for sure. Okay, but take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and to congregations. You shall be beaten, and you shall be brought before rulers and sovereigns for my sake, for a witness to them. And the good news has to be proclaimed first to all the nations. And when they lead you away and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand what you are to say. But whatever you is given you in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who are speaking, but the Ruach HaKadosh. And brother shall deliver up brother to death, and a father his child. And children shall rise up against parents and shall put them to death. And you shall be hated by all because of my name. But he, shall, he who shall have endured to the end, he shall be saved. And when you see the abomination, that was bad. Where did I go there, Eli? We're on verse 14. There it is, yep. Okay, and when you see the abomination that lays waste, spoken of by Daniel the Nabai, put up where it should not be, he who reads it, let him understand. Then let those who are in Yahuda flee to the mountains, and he who is on top, the housetop, let him not go down into the house, nor come in to take whatever out of his house. Now, we've talked about this before, but I, in case other people have questions about what this is, the Christians have, have always talked about these, these things of Daniel being future prophecy, and they were up until 70 AD, and they, they already came in, they, already, they, they basically surrounded Jerusalem, starved everybody to to the point where ladies were, were selling their kids and eating their children. Everybody's eating. The, there was no food. They, nothing could come in. Nothing could go out. And they, they, they did one of the most horrific things ever. And Messiah Yahushua was saying, hey, when you guys see these signs that are coming across, you need to be aware. Don't, if you're in, on the house top, don't go back into your house. When you see the forces surrounding you, get out of the city, get as far away as you possibly can because they're coming. And so... That has come and that has gone, but many, many people think that is a future prophecy for Israel. Okay, 16. And he who is in the field, let him not go back to get his cloak. And woe to those who are pregnant and to those nursing children in those days. And pray that your flight does not take place in winter. For in those days there shall be distress, such as he has, has not been from the beginning of creation, which Elohim created until this time, nor ever shall be. And if the add-on had not shortened those days, no flesh would have been saved. But because of the chosen ones whom he chose, he shortened the days. And if anyone then says to you, look, here is HaMashiach, or look there, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets shall rise and show signs and wonders to lead astray, if possible, even the chosen ones. And you, take heed. See, I have forewarned you of it all. But in those days, after that distress, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give its light. And the stars of the Shamaim shall fall and the powers of the Shamaim shall be shaken. 
And when they shall see the bin of Adam coming in the clouds with much power and esteem. And then, Eli, we can't touch this at the same time, friend. Okay. Uh, and they shall see the bin of Adam coming in the clouds with much power and esteem. And then he shall send his messengers and assemble his chosen ones from the four winds, from the farthest part of earth to the farthest part of the Shimeim. And when this parable from the fig tree, and learn this fair parable from the fig tree, when its branch has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that the summer is near. So you also, when you see these taking place, know that it is near at the door. Truly, I say to you, this generation shall by no means pass away till all this takes place. The Shimeim and the earth shall pass away, but my words shall by no means pass away. Okay, what does he mean by that, guys? His teachings, everything he said. His word, he said his words are his father's words. He said his Torah is not going to pass away. Yep, um, and they'll always be there. So wherever, whatever happens to the, this lands, the world, wherever it is, after our time, um, the Torah will never, ever disappear. But concerning that day and the hour, no one knows. Not even the messengers in the Shimeim, nor the bin, but only the father. Take heed, watch and pray. For you do not know when the time is, as a man going abroad, having left his house and given authority to his servants, and to each his work, and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the crowing of the cock, or in the morning, lest, coming suddenly, he should find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all. Watch. So basically, he just gave them another prophecy for the next few days because we're almost towards the end of Mark here. Yeah, and well, there's there's um you know something as well. I mean, it, we need to be watching. When he says to watch, he's not just saying this to this people right here. That he's he's coming. That he's lest you find sleeping. We're talking about sleeping people that do not keep the Torah. Right. Every Christian out there that is sleeping has does not keep the Torah. They have no idea what the good news is for real. They have Messiah, but they don't have the other piece of it. They don't understand why the Messiah had to come. We all realize that we are sinful people, but for people to understand there is a path that we need to walk and that we need to go, that's the, the hoax. No one gets it. No one sees it. And then when you tell them they need to keep the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator, they'll laugh at you and they'll scoff at you. But that's our job and that is what we are doing. And I think this pretty much wraps up everything that we have here. Anyone else have anything? I don't think we got any new commandments out of this. Uh, youth for Yah tonight? Yeah. Youth for Yah tonight. Y'all yeah. willing? Hopefully you guys get this out. Um, it's been a couple weeks. You guys have not made it out in the oh, Spanish we version. We did last week in Spanish, right? We did uh, last week in Spanish. Did we? Yeah. Did we? Are you yeah. sure? We didn't get English because of the dogfight. Oh, the English from the dogfight. Okay. All right. Well, that is it. So thank you guys very, very much. Much love to all of our family out there. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.